Hello, my name is Aaron Fisher and I am the Youth Livestock and Equine Specialist in the Department of Animal Science at the University of Tennessee. I am presenting a video study series focused on beef cattle related topics for the Skittlethon. This particular episode will focus on genetic selection tools for beef cattle. We will talk about expected progeny differences or EPDs and selection indexes what they are and how they are used. Selection decisions for beef cattle breeding programs typically consist of an evaluation of an animal's phenotype and genotype. Phenotypic evaluation is basically what physical attributes does the animal have that will help me reach the goals of my cow herd as quickly as possible. This would be things like structure, muscle, and volume, along with others. Genotypic evaluation looks at the genetic potential that an animal possesses for the economically important traits that I am focused on. This is done through the use of genetic selection tools like expected progeny differences, or EPDs, selection indexes, along with other tools like marker-assisted selection. EPDs are predictions of how an animal's future offspring will perform compared to other animals' offspring of the same breed. They are breed specific, meaning that you cannot compare EPDs for a certain trait across breeds. For example, a 2.1 pound birth weight EPD for Angus is not equal to a 2.1 pound birth weight EPD for Simmental. You have to compare each number back to the breed average for each breed. EPDs are expressed as the unit for each particular trait. Examples of this would be pounds for weights and inches for fat thickness. EPDs are calculated based on data collected from progeny of a given animal. To make sure we are all on the same page, here are a couple terms that we will use. Progeny refers to offspring of an animal, the sire is the bull, and the dam is the cow. As you would expect, the more progeny that an animal has, the more data points that will be included in their EPDs. Since these EPDs will be based on more data, there is more confidence or reliability in these EPDs compared to an animal with very few or no progeny included in the numbers. The accuracy of an EPD is the estimate of its reliability or the confidence that we can have in that value. It is expressed as a number between 0 and 1 with a higher number reflecting more accuracy. This brings up a great question. How do cattle that have not had any offspring already have EPDs? They are assigned interim EPDs that are based on the performance of their parents. These values will have a low accuracy value, but do give an indication of expected future performance of their calves. We will now highlight a few of the more common EPDs, what they mean and how they are used. The first is birth weight. It is a prediction of the birth weight of future calves and is expressed in pounds. The higher the birth weight, the heavier the calves will be at birth. There is a direct positive correlation between birth weight and dystocia or calving problems. Generally, heavier calves at birth will increase the chance of a difficult birth. Next is weaning weight. The weaning weight EPD is a prediction of the weaning weight of future calves and is expressed in pounds. Since calves are typically sold at weaning and by the pound, generally the higher the weaning weight, the more money a calf will generate when sold at weaning. Yearling weight is the next EPD and is also expressed in pounds. Yearling weight is a prediction of the weight of future calves at 12 months of age. By this age, calves are typically in the feedlot phase of beef production, so the higher the yearling weight, the faster the calf will grow post-weaning and through the finishing phase. 
The maternal milk EPD is a prediction of the amount of milk that a cow will produce after she calves. It is expressed in pounds. Higher maternal milk EPD typically relates to more milk available for a nursing calf as long as adequate feed resources are provided for the cow. This will generally result in higher weaning weights of calves. Please remember that depending on the breeding situation and the available resources, it is possible to have a maternal milk EPD that is too high for a given situation in order to maintain overall productivity of the cow herd. Calving East Direct is another EPD focused on ease of calving. It is a prediction of the percentage of unassisted births for a given cow. The higher the value, the easier the calving is expected to be. There is an inverse relationship between birth weight and calving ease direct, meaning a lower birth weight EPD will be accompanied by a higher calving ease direct EPD. Next are three carcass oriented EPDs beginning with marbling. The marbling EPD is a prediction of the intramuscular fat present in the carcass of future calves. It is expressed as a fraction of the difference in the USDA marbling score. The higher the value, the more marbling that can be expected to be present. More marbling typically results in higher quality meat products. The ribeye area EPD is a prediction of the amount of muscle present on the carcass of future calves expressed in square inches. The higher the ribeye area value, the more muscle that is expected to be present. This typically results in more meat products and a higher value carcass. Fat thickness EPD is a prediction of the amount of fat present at the 12th rib of the carcass of future calves expressed in inches. The higher the fat value, the more fat that is expected to be present on the carcass. Depending on the situation and the expected market for the calves, it could be beneficial to have more fat and it could be beneficial to have less fat. In both situations, it is certainly possible to be too extreme toward fat or too extreme toward lean. Next, we will spend a few minutes discussing selection indexes. Selection indexes are performance measures that combine multiple traits together in a single value. They are breed specific, meaning that you cannot compare between breeds. Also, each individual breed association develops their own indexes. 100 is considered average for a given index. Thus, a bull with an index of 110 is considered 10% better for a given trait than the average for that breed. Grid value or $G is an Angus specific selection index that is a prediction of profitability due to genetics for carcass grid merit. It includes carcass weight, marbling, ribeye area, and fat in calculating the value. Beef value or dollar B is another Angus specific selection index that is a prediction of profitability due to genetics for post weaning and carcass performance. It includes yearling weight, dry matter intake, marbling, carcass weight, ribeye area, and fat in calculating the value. The Baldy Maternal Index or BMI dollar is a Hereford specific maternally focused index based on breeding Hereford bulls to Hereford and Angus cross cows with progeny targeted to meet the certified Hereford beef program. It includes fertility, calving ease, weaning weight, marbling, and ribeye area in calculating the value. Another Hereford specific index is calving EZ index or CEZ dollar. This index focuses on bulls that can be bred to heifers. It includes calving ease and fertility with little emphasis on growth and carcass 
in calculating the value. Mainstream Terminal Index, or dollar MTI, is a limousine-specific index measured on expected profit per carcass. It includes post-winning growth, quality grade, and yield grade in calculating the value. The Herd Builder Index is a Red Angus specific index developed to build profitable cow herds when Red Angus bulls are bred to produce offspring that are 75% Red Angus and 25% Simmental where replacement heifers are retained and all remaining calves are sold on a quality based carcass grid. Feedlot Index or Dollar F is a shorthorn specific index that is a prediction of profitability for calves sold on the fed market. It includes growth and carcass traits in calculating the value. We will finish up with two Simmental specific selection indexes. The first is the All Purpose Index or API. It evaluates sires for use on the entire cow herd with the portion of daughters required to maintain herd size retained and the remaining heifers and steers put on feed and sold on a grade and yield basis. Finally, there is the Terminal Index or TI. It evaluates sires for use on mature Angus cows with all offspring put on feed and sold on a grade and yield basis. For more resources regarding EPDs and selection indexes, the best places to check out are the individual breed association websites. They will have much more information about these tools as they relate to that specific breed. Select Sires also has a good summary of many of these tools in the resources section of their website. That wraps up our discussion of genetic selection tools for beef cattle. Please understand that we just highlighted the basics of these tools and introduced the most common. There are many more EPDs and indexes as well as more genetic selection tools and the development and use of these tools is more complex than what we discussed today. I wish you the best of luck as you progress through your beef cattle project. Please let me know if I can ever be of assistance. Thank you and have a great day.